In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. As we begin the journey of these three great days, the journey of death and resurrection, we gather not in the cathedral, which stands dark and empty, but we gather in the chapel of St Vincent's Hospital, Kangaroo Point, because the whole world at this time stands under the shadow of death, and yet we gather here in this place of life and death to celebrate the life that is bigger than death, the life that is in Jesus Christ. He is Lord of this hospital and he is with us here and now at this Mass of the Lord's Supper. We come to him just as we are, bearing the burden of sin and all its wounds, but in him, in this place of healing, we find the healing that only his mercy can bring. So let's in a moment of silence as we begin the journey of these three great days acknowledge that we are wounded by sin but claim the healing of Christ's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And on earth is to men of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Pray now in the silence of our hearts. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, 
in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, on the 10th day of this month, each man must take an animal from his flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honor of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honor. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name. A blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew the hour that the Father had, that, that, that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment, and, taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him, 
That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me master and Lord, and rightly, so I am. If I then, the Lord and master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So all the churches are closed and the cathedral stands empty. But the hospitals certainly are not closed, and they're full, and they may be even fuller if COVID-19 gets any worse, which it may well. Hospital people are speaking of a surge, perhaps later this month, which could last for weeks or even months. For a long time we've taken our healthcare system for granted, it's just always been there. But with this new crisis we've come to see that even it has its limits and a fragility of its own. But it also has massive strengths, our health healthcare system. And it's those strengths we recognise by coming here to this chapel tonight. We not only recognise the strengths, but we want to give thanks for them in the midst of this crisis. And we give thanks at a time when we're coming to see our own fragility in a whole new way. We didn't think we were this fragile, but we are. The most distinctive part of the Mass of the Lord's Supper that we celebrate tonight is usually the washing of the feet. We've heard the story of it from John's Gospel. And in washing feet, of course, we commemorate what Jesus did before the Last Supper. Now this was a customary gesture with a quite practical purpose and it was performed usually by the lowest of all the servants. And that's why Peter finds it so confronting when Jesus appears before him to wash his feet. Tonight, however, we can't wash feet. We will, however, wash hands, which is a bit of a feeble substitute, but we're all into hand washing at this time, and rightly so. So in this sanitising moment, we will wash hands instead of feet. Again, a little symbolic gesture. But we're here tonight in this chapel at St Vincent's Hospital precisely because we can't wash feet. Because in a hospital, you see, the feet of the world are washed every day and every night. So the foot washing may not happen in the cathedral or in your parish church, but it does happen here. Nothing can stop it. The foot washing must go on, and it does. Doctors, nurses, administration staff, cooks, cleaners, launderers, and God alone knows who else in a hospital. All of them foot washers, like Jesus. Nor can we tonight celebrate together the gift of the Eucharist, as we normally do, looking back to the Lord's institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper. So again, we come here because hospitals are Eucharistic, not just because they have a chapel, 
They are Eucharistic, especially at a time like this. Why? Because in this place, and in any place like it, lives are put on the line for the sake of others, the sick and the dying. Bodies are broken and blood poured out for the life of the world. Life-giving sacrifices are made here. And that's what the Eucharist is about. If the sick can't come to us, we go to them. So all the sick, not only in this hospital or in the aged care residence next door, but all the sick are gathered here in this chapel tonight with us. If their loved ones can't go to them, we come to them in their name. So all the loved ones of the sick gather here with us in this chapel tonight. If the doctors and the nurses and the other hospital staff are too busy to come to us, then we come to them here this evening. And they gather with us in this chapel as we look to the life that's bigger than death. And we thank them for the service, the service they give to that life, the life of God, for their service of God, which is a truly Eucharistic service, whether they know it or not. Like foot washing, the care of the sick in a time of crisis isn't glamorous. There was nothing glamorous about what Jesus did before the Last Supper. Nor is there anything glamorous about what happens in general in a hospital. Much of what's involved in care of the sick is hidden. We take it for granted, like the whole healthcare system, it's just there. But it is the care of the sick that makes the world go round. It's the washing of the feet, the care of the sick and the dying, which makes this place, St Vincent's, a kind of cathedral, holy ground as hospitals always are. I say holy ground because the risen Christ himself walks these corridors, the corridors of this hospital, he removes his outer garment, as we've heard, ties a towel around his waist and tends the sick and the dying day and night, whatever it takes. This is the place of Jesus. People die in this place. The shadow of death falls over it, just as it did over the Last Supper with betrayal and execution in the air. But this hospital stands as a monument to Easter, the life that's bigger than death, just as the Last Supper not only looked back to the great Passover meal, the great liberation, but looked forward to the feast of life that would never end, the marriage feast of the Lamb. St Vincent's Hospital is a temple of life because here feet are washed and it's the foot washing that leads to life even when it's the feet of the dying and the dead. The service becomes the sacrifice for the life of the world. It's the washing of feet and all that it symbolises that opens the door to Easter as we do tonight, the door to the triumph of life over death. If we did no more than go through the ritual motions in an empty cathedral, then there would be no real Easter. But if we can learn from the foot washing that goes on day and night in this hospital, then the church may become more like 
the field hospital, which Pope Francis says we are to be. The thing the church needs most today, Pope Francis writes, is the ability to heal wounds and warm hearts. It needs nearness, closeness. I see the church as a field hospital after battle. It's useless to ask seriously injured people if they have high cholesterol or how their blood sugar levels are. You have to heal their wounds. A field hospital. What a deep and powerful chord that image struck, not only in the church, but far beyond. And that same chord sounds deep and strong as we gather in this hospital chapel on this holy night. Tonight we come to St. Vincent's, to this upper room where feet are washed and wounds are healed. We come to learn anew what it is to be the church in a time of affliction like this. And in this eerie, plague-ridden landscape where things may never again be as they were. So as we set forth into the three days of death and resurrection, we come humbly and gratefully to learn more of what it means for the community of disciples to be a field hospital. The foot washers of the world, a body broken and blood poured out for the life of the world. Amen. The God who gives us the supreme gift of his Son in the Eucharist is the God who on a night like this will deny us nothing. So in that powerful faith, let's open our hearts to God in this time of need, this time of affliction. 
we pray for the church in every place, a life centred upon Jesus Christ, nourished at this time by prayer, the scriptures and spiritual communion, called to serve in his name. We pray for Pope Francis, committed to Jesus and his gospel, with a deep father's love for the sufferings of all people, always honouring the gift of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you be our We pray that we may learn from Christ's example of love and service to be missionary disciples, to wash each other's feet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you be our That those preparing for baptism may trust the action of God in their lives and be faithful to the call of God. We pray for the suffering of this of our world, peace for every place enduring war, hope for refugees everywhere, freedom of religion for persecuted Christians and those of other faiths. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. We pray in this time of the coronavirus pandemic, healing for the sick, strength for their families, courage for those who care for them, wisdom for leaders making decisions for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you be our prayer. We pray to tonight, Father, for all who work at St Vincent's Hospital and at St Vincent's Aged Care Residence, for all who are patients here or residents here, we ask that this be a place of peace and healing, an Easter place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Almighty and all merciful God, lover of the human race, healer of all our wounds, in whom there is no shadow of death. Save us in this time of crisis. Grant wisdom and courage to our leaders. Watch over with a special love all medical people as they tend the sick and work for a cure. Stir in us a sense of solidarity beyond all isolation. If our doors are closed, let our hearts be open. By the power of your love, destroy the virus of fear, that hope may never die, and the light of Easter, the triumph of life, may shine upon us and the whole world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth, fruit, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifices at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is being accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ your Son. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering in his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us we are washed clean and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim Holy Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Ken, my assistant bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. All they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, 
which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, to pray, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace, and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light and peace. 
To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Barnabas, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. As the Lord Jesus himself has taught, so on this holy night we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I'm very conscious on this night of all nights what a deprivation it is for all of you who are following the live stream not to be able to receive Holy Communion on this night of nights when we celebrate the great gift of the Eucharist, the body and blood of the Son. But I can only hope and pray that this moment of deprivation will lead you into a deep spiritual communion with Christ who is no less close to you in one sense where you are now in the midst of that deprivation and that this experience will stir in you even an even deeper hunger for Christ in the Eucharist so that when we are able to gather again in joy around the table of the Lord your deepest hungers will be satisfied. I am profoundly grateful to St Vincent's Hospital for welcoming us to this place this evening. It means a great deal, in particular to the new CEO, Ollie, and the Director of Mission, Lisa, who welcomed me personally when I arrived at the hospital this evening. But to everyone at St Vincent's Hospital, we are profoundly grateful for many things, including the welcome this evening. I want to thank, um, in a very special way, and, and to greet in a very special way too, the people at St Vincent's Aged Care, some of whom are following the live stream. It's rather late for you, <laughs> but you are following and others will perhaps um, see the live streaming on YouTube at another time. But I know that uh, for all of you in the aged care residence, this has been a particularly hard time. Uh, the isolation that you have had to suffer is perhaps a special burden uh, among the many burdens you bear in your later years. So I want to thank the staff of the aged care residents and I want to greet every single resident and all the members of your family who would love to be with you but perhaps cannot be. And I will keep you all in my prayer, in a special corner of my prayer through these Easter days. Today is exactly one month since, since the death of Archbishop John Bathersby. So you might just say a prayer for John and, and remember him as he sets forth through the darkness of death and into the endless light of eternity. Eternal rest give to John, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God, who is endless peace, bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Sanguinis coe preziosi, quem in mundi preziorum, fructus ventris generosi, rex et fulgentium. Nobis tatus, nobis natus, Ex intacta virgine, et in mundo conversatus, sparso verbi sermine, sui moras incollatus, miroclatus.
Oh, 